So the start of the race was quite interesting because it's a narrow opening to the lap in Suzuka. In fact, the whole track is pretty narrow and an old school circuit. But there was a big offset in the tyres and the whole race really was dominated by tyres. Uh, Fernando Alonso started on the softs, as did loads of drivers outside of the top 11 positions. And it gave them a good a chance to attack and make places into the first corner. So let's first of all watch Fernando uh, in the Aston Martin here. Gets a really good start. And as the lights go out, it wants to make positions on that soft tyre with all those around him on the mediums, but just gets bulked here. To the right-hand side, Norris covers him off, knows he will be very aware that Alonso behind us on the soft tyre. And then as Fernando goes to the left, Norris also just sort of wafts out towards the left-hand side. Because the track is narrow and because there's grass on the outside, there's just nowhere really for, uh, for Alonso to go. If this was Bahrain or another circuit with, uh, with asphalt runoff, you might be able to go all the way out wide and sort of sneak two wheels off the track. But obviously, you're not going to do that on the grass. So Alonso has to, uh, to seat position, a hold position, and keep in sixth place. But if we watch this again now with the RBs, they are also on the medium tyre, and everyone behind them is, uh, is on the softs. So you've got Daniel Ricciardo there, you've got Yuki Tsunoda just hovering behind the lights there. And watch them as the lights go out, because they're about to be absolutely overwhelmed with uh, loads of drivers on the soft coming through. So first of all, you've got Bottas on the right-hand side, you've got Hulkenberg on the left-hand side making ground because the soft tyres just fire up. There was quite a big difference between this on the hardest range that we, uh, that we have on the tyres. And as we come through the first corners, you can see the RBs still just dropping back into the clutches of the Alpines, the, uh, the Williams as well. And that is the basis for this crash between uh, Ricardo and Alex Albon. We jump on board with Albon. That is Daniel Ricciardo, quite a long way ahead at the start. So you wonder how these two would actually come into contact in this, uh, this early part of the race. But it's a good start from, uh, from Albon on the softs. And you can see now both RBs dropping back. Sonoda's just ahead of us. Ricciardo's off to our left-hand side. And uh, Albon doesn't throw a nose in quite sensibly there. But look also at the way Ricciardo's car is just on edge as he's turning into these, uh, these opening couple of corners. The amount of small corrections that Daniel was having to do here is quite extreme on a tyre that just isn't warmed up. And I think RB particularly didn't get their tyre preparation right on this medium tyre. And it means that Sonoda lost ground from his top 10 starting place and Ricardo lost ground as well. And it made him vulnerable to attack on both sides. We've got Lance Stroll on the left-hand side and we're on board with, with Alex Albon, who's going to have the collision here. As we play it through, you can see once again, Ricardo big slide, loses traction on the way out. And now Albon is invited to try and make this pass on the outside. He's absolutely entitled to be here coming up a long way on the outside of, uh, of Daniel and uh, is then just squeezed onto the grass, little clip and bam, big crash into the wall and it's another damaged chassis for Williams. So, uh, so it's a tough one for Alvin to stomach and I don't think this is at all uh, to be blamed on him. If you look on board with Daniel, you can see here that he just doesn't look in the mirror on the right-hand side. So we play it through, exit of turn two. You can see he's fighting the car so much. It's difficult when you are being overwhelmed with cars passing you right and left had a decent qualifying starting in 11th almost making the top 10 but you just your heart sinks as you're going backwards and you're looking in your mirrors as much as you can you're fighting the car it's a really difficult situation for uh, for drivers in this position as we come out here he's looking to the left and that's because lance stroll is over to this uh, to this left hand side so he checks the mirror there sees that strolls there let's give him a bit of a squeeze initially but then try and open the corner to stay around the outside of stroll but the mistake that he makes is to not check the right-hand mirror where Albin is way further up the, uh, the outside and in a position where it's actually quite difficult for him to back out. So Stroll's actually not really enough on the inside to, to be a, a huge threat. But remember, Ricardo hasn't got the grip either, so he's a bit worried about being too tight into turn three. He comes across and uh, there is obviously no space for, uh, for Albin. And that is Ricardo pitched into a spin and also into the wall. And the really compelling shot is this one. Looking back from turn two, we can see here come the three cars. Looks like they're side by side. Stroll's actually just a little behind in, uh, in this group here. You've got Ricardo. Already the attitude of the car is to close that space to Albert on the right-hand side. He just doesn't know he's there. And uh, you can see in the end, it's quite an egregious move to, uh, to force him completely off the road. And it shows that Ricardo had no idea that Albon was there. No penalty for, uh, for Daniel here. And I think in a way, he's lucky to get away with this one because that was all on him, just cramping the space of the driver on his outside. But the steward said, first lap, cars all around, these things can happen. 
and it had pretty severe consequences, not only for Ricardo, who's actually coming under a bit of pressure early on in the season, but more critically for Williams, who lost their best driver in the race and have damaged another chassis and loads of spare parts as well. So Williams really, really in the wars. Just squeeze me. Nowhere to go. I had a, not a great start, but obviously a bit better than the medium tyres and um, had good traction coming up turn two. Uh, yeah, that was it really. It just um, I don't think Daniel saw me and then it was just a bit of a, a pinching moment. So I tried to back out a bit, but couldn't quite get out the way quick enough. So yeah, it was a, a tough one to take. Obviously, we're not in a great position as a team with parts and, and just general damage for the car. So yeah, very frustrating and obviously just uh, just disappointing. We need to um, bounce back in and get ready for for China. By turn two, it settled a little bit, but then I remember getting out of two quite quite uh, still with a, a little bit of uh, lack of traction. And I remember an Aston on my left, so I was kind of watching that car. And then as I was starting to drift to open up three, I, uh, I felt uh, I felt Alex. So I think yeah, just everyone kind of got choked up, and that was that. And it was a tough weekend generally for uh, for Williams. Logan Sargent in FP1 having this off coming through Dunlop Curve, turn seven, gets wide, and that's a huge smack once again in FP1. Really something he could ill afford. And this one for uh, for me is not done a huge amount of laps at Suzuka. Poor awareness probably of the circuit at this stage. So he's actually on a soft tire lap for the first time in the weekend, pushing on, fighting the car to this point, and this is okay. Problem is, when you're sat low in the cockpit over this crest, you can't see that this access road on the uh, on the right hand side here, this space is all going to just disappear on uh, on this part here. So you can't keep your wheels out there. So he needs to be backing off this and uh, and saving it for another lap and realizing that he's got a bit wide, back off it, bring the car back onto the track whilst he still has the grip on this curb and the uh, and the tarmac. But he keeps his foot in. And because you're sat so low, you don't see what's over the crest. And as soon as he does, then he'll realize here, just a little bit more steering lock because he realizes the grass is coming. And with this amount of G on, uh, so much load on the car, high speed, you put a wheel on the grass and you are toast. So off goes Sergeant. And that was a really costly one for, for him in practice. Thankfully, they managed to rebuild the car and send him into the race. We have another slightly sloppy one for, uh, for Logan in the race. This time, it's uh, not costing Williams damage, which is crucial. But we can see here, turns in, slight touch of the curb, but just gets a little wide coming through the Degners, can't slow the car down, and off he goes into the gravel. And it's just small inaccuracies that Logan can ill afford. Under pressure, we know all the, uh, all the chat that came about with Williams' driver choice in Melbourne. Logan really has a point to prove at the moment, and he was having a good race up until this point, made some good overtakes. Uh, it was looking encouraging, as once again, the only Williams in the Grand Prix after Albon's early exit. But you can just see the inaccuracies here, and lap to lap, there's just small differences in Logan's line. And this is why he does sometimes make random mistakes in a Grand Prix, thinking back to Zanvoort, thinking to Singapore as well last season. Uh, these things just happen slightly too often still for, uh, for Sargent. And you can see coming in here, so he's just taking the curb slightly more on lap 42 on the right-hand side, carrying a little bit more speed into the corner, a little bit more of a bounce there on the apex as well, which results in him getting further out wide in these two Degners. And he's going to struggle to slow the car down as efficiently on the right-hand side here from the, uh, from the green uh, rumble strip on the outside, the car bouncing slightly on the floor as well. So when he gets into this point, this is going to be difficult to slow the car down. He's carrying the same entry speed and so therefore he just doesn't manage to, uh, to stop it and he's quite a long way from making that corner and it was all coming from the setup of Degna 1. So uh, Williams in a lot of trouble. Albon's car's gone back to the UK to be repaired. Uh, once again a damaged chassis for them. Once again no points for them. Uh, Albon, I would say, completely unlucky in, uh, in Suzuka. Sargent, more encouraging at times during this weekend but the big crash he can't afford either. And as a team, they've all got to get their act together because it's not looking great for them. And I believe that Sargent has gone off the track there. He's trying to get out. There he is. He's trying to reverse onto the circuit. And that is not a great place to reverse a Formula One car onto. I was pushing hard, trying to, trying to catch the cars ahead, um, just giving it everything, every lap. And um, unfortunately, bottomed on the curb and just locked up and went straight. So yeah, disappointing mistake, but I think a, um, a positive race with knowing that the result could have been there to take.